Now let's take a quick look at the debt markets um, for today's fixed income trading. And um, fixed income dealer at Sterling Bank, Rotimi Shale, joins me now. Good afternoon, Rotimi. Good afternoon, Jinege. So tell me, what market sentiment have you observed in today's um, trading? Yeah, today in today's trading, the market has been uh, relatively low, and the fixed income traders are waiting for the auction. That's it. So the market has been dull relatively on the fixed income desk. Uh, we have seen yields uh, trading at uh, 15 levels, or right at 15 percent levels. Uh, the market has been short for a while. Uh, the traders are hoping to cover up their short. Uh, position from the auction next week. So we are seeing uh, a sentiment of a higher yield uh, in the auction that will be conducted by the BMO next week. Now, what is the liquidity position at the market now? The liquidity position in the market right now, at, uh, the market is short, really short in the market. Uh, the market uh, opened with a negative uh, 74 billion. Uh, which uh, uh, even the year uh, treasury bills at the short end of fixed income uh, to rise up in the sense that people are trading off uh, treasury bills to raise uh, cash for to cover their position. So the market is generally short and uh, liquidity wise. So what are your short term outlook? Uh, well, our outlook, uh, we as the um, as the days progress in the month. Uh, we are looking at uh, reprice from uh, maturities on the um, treasury bills uh, maturity that will be happening this Thursday. Um, if that one coming to the system, it will give a reprice into the system. And we'll be looking at even uh, the upper week as well, where we'll be expecting the uh, statutory allocation to come to the system. So when this one comes in, I think there will be a little bit of rise, uh, reprice in the system, and we'll see yields uh, getting a reverse because people will start buying. All right. Thank you very much for your time, Rutimi. Rotimi Shole, fixed income dealer at Sterling Bank. We move on now to Ivory Coast, uh, which has planned to complete a sale of 150 billion CFA francs worth of Islamic bonds later this month, following Togo's debut sale of Sovereign Sukuk launched last month. Our two West African nations uh, joined Senegal in tapping the market for Sukuk, helping expand the use of Islamic financing options outside of the industry's core centers in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. The Ivory Coast will sell the seven-year Sukuk using the lease-based contract known as Ijara, with the subscription period closing on August 31, and that's according to the Saudi-based Islamic Corporation for the Development of the Private Sector. This will represent the second phase of a 300 billion CFA franc uh, school program set up last year by the world's top cocoa producer and French-speaking West Africa's economic powerhouse. How Sudan's inflation more than doubled in July to reach an annual rate of 661.3% um, as the economy of the five-year-old nation continued to reel amid civil conflict. Now, the National Bureau of Statistics said in a statement that inflation jumped from 309.6% a month earlier due to rising food and non-alcoholic drinks prices uh, prices rose 7 to 7.7% month on month in July. Oil producing South Sudan won independence from Sudan in 2011, but in December 2013 slid into a two-year civil war after a dispute between President Salva Kerr and his former deputy. The economy has been battered, driving prices higher. And in Uganda, the central bank has cut interest rates, saying a stable shilling had dampened inflation as it faced calls to also bring down debt auction yields to help the monetary easing feed through to the broader economy, making its third cut since April and signaling further reductions ahead. The central bank of Uganda lowered the benchmark policy rate by 100 basis points to 14 percent, stepping up efforts to boost growth after the economy shrank in the first quarter from the previous one, hurt by a fall in agricultural output. 
BOU governor said the bank expected growth to accelerate to 5.5% in the fiscal year ending June 2017 from a forecast of 4.6% in 2015 and 2016. Our annual headline and core inflation were likely to drop by the end of 2016. And that's it on the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Chimizie Obiwagu.